So we've got a site, it's been resurrected, we, we have it basically set up and ready to start adding e-commerce. That's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you now the plugin that we use to add e-commerce, all aspects of e-commerce. And then we're going to spend this week, uh, this, this class, these three weeks, dissecting every aspect of this plugin, talking about best practices, caveats, pitfalls, suggestions, and all of that stuff. So. We'll go back to the dashboard. Click on the plugins uh, menu item, and it shows you these are our current plugins. Even though a Kismet, if you notice, was not activated it was still asking for an update. This says activate a kismet. This says deactivate duplicator, deactivate Google Analytics, deactivate, etc. These are active and they're blue. A kismet is white and it's not active, but it still asked for an update. So you might have you might you can install as many plugins as you want to, to your WordPress, but really only have the ones installed that you're going to use because they're going to be checking in periodically to the mothership to check is there a new update is there a new update and if you've got a bunch of plugins that you're not even using hanging around they're going to be sucking up your bandwidth you're going to be slowing down your site and you're not even using them we're not using a kismet we are going to so I'm not going to delete it but if you have some plugins hanging around there you haven't used in a while, you might want to think about deleting them if you're not using them so they don't slow down your site. And then people ask, well, is there a limit to how many plugins I should use? I can't answer that. That depends on what functionality you need on your site and if you have the right plugin for it. So on these that we've got, we've got six of them, five are active, and these are the ones that I recommend, that I recommended last month. If you weren't here, these are the ones I recommend. These are the ones we set up on all of our client sites. They have different features and, and uh, uses. So I'm not going to get into that. Uh, you can ask during the break. But these are the ones that I recommend. And now we're going to use another plugin that I recommend for e commerce. If we go over to sheet number five, instructions number five. This is an overview here. We'll go to it in detail, of course. But on sheet number five, I'm, I'm talking about our intro to the e-commerce plugin. It just reminds you how to get back to your site if you're on Windows or Mac, and then installing the plugin, and then using the plugin. So we've gone into our plugins screen. At the top, we have the button to add new plugin. So click on that. Click at the top, add a new. You get into the WordPress plugin repository. What's, a what's, what's the difference between a repository and a depository? Anyone know? I don't know, but this is where all of our uh, plugins are deposited in the repository. And uh, some popular ones show up here. And notice at the very bottom you might see tags. Maybe you're looking for a particular YouTube plugin. There's a bunch of them. And there's also search at the top right. So my instructions here say, let's search for the plugin WP eCommerce, no quotation marks, and then press enter. The funny thing is that in older versions of WordPress, you would, you would um, type in the name of a plugin that you're searching for, and then there would be a search button. There's no search button anymore, you have to press enter little minor thing but press enter it returned 708 results and as you scroll down there's a variety of e-commerce solutions
this is not the only one out there. There's, there's another famous one out there that I'll mention in a moment that you might also want to look into. It might work better for you than the one we're going to look at, but we're going to use this one called WP eCommerce by WP eCommerce. Notice you have a lot of results and this particular one has three and a half stars out of uh, five. This one has perfect five stars. And then if I look around, this one's got no stars and this one's got five stars. And you might think, well, why are we going to use a plugin that does not have five stars? That's what the stars are there for. I don't go to any other restaurants on Yelp besides five star restaurants. So why would I go to, why would I use one that is not perfectly five stars? There's a variety of reasons for that. One, first of all, is this has one rating. So basically the theme author themselves gave them five stars. Or maybe the theme, and maybe the plugin author's mom gave them uh, five stars. So I'm not going to trust it with just one rating. Also, this only has 40 active installations worldwide. If I scroll down, this one has five stars and 600 active installations. A little better, but still perhaps not what I'm looking for. That's one of the ones I'm going to talk about in a moment. Is that the other famous one that you said? Yeah. It's in this book. This one's got 10 stars, and this one's got 30. Well, the one we're going to look at here, there's a lot of solutions to doing online uh, e-commerce. This one has 203 ratings. It has 70,000 active installations. It was updated one month ago. It's compatible with our version of WordPress. This, again, might not be the perfect solution for everyone. Maybe WooCommerce is. We'll look at WooCommerce in detail in a moment. But um, have you ever experienced going to a, a restaurant and it wasn't a great experience and you then raced home and went on Yelp and gave them a bad review? You don't have to admit it, but I know a lot of people probably have. How many of you, on the opposite, have you gone to Yelp and given them five stars? I think a lot of people are more apt to go negative and give the give the um, give the negative review because it sticks in your mind much more than the positive one. If something is positive, it's just positive, and then you you live with it. So I think that's what's going on with many kinds of plugins like e-commerce in that someone downloads the plugin they try to use it and it doesn't do exactly what they need one star and someone else also downloads it it doesn't do exactly what they need one star but then a hundred people downloaded it, it did what they want and they move on with their life and keep shopping and selling and they forget to come back and give it five stars I think more people are apt to to give a negative review because it's just so burned into their minds rather than to go back and give a positive review. So this solution probably is not the perfect one for everyone. It's probably not going to be the perfect one for everyone in this room. So that's why it might not have perfect stars. But my company has used this and WooCommerce and we can say the, the which is better WooCommerce or, or, or WP Commerce? The one that's better is the one that works for you. So if we tell you WooCommerce and you start using it and it's not as amazing as I told you it was, you're probably going to go back and give it one star. And that's okay. But we're going to concentrate in this class on WP eCommerce. To compare it, we can search up here for the other big famous one, WooCommerce. One word. If you search for WooCommerce, W O O Commerce, WooCommerce, excelling e commerce. This one's got four and a half stars, 961 reviews, 1 million active installs, updated six days ago, compatible with your version of WordPress. And then you might say, well, this is clearly better. Why aren't we learning this one? My company has worked with both WP Commerce and WooCommerce. And honestly, WooCommerce is really good, but you you're going to be you're going to be investing more into it. 
setup-wise and monetarily. Both WooCommerce and WP Commerce are totally free. And the totally free version might be perfect for everyone. But there's probably going to be things here and there that you wish that you had. WooCommerce sells you the thing that you wish that you had. So you're going to start to see, I wish that I could tie products together in this certain way. No problem. Thirty more dollars and you have that option. You're going to see, well, I would like variations that once you buy this, it suggests that. No problem. Another forty dollars, you'll get that option. So you're going to quickly see that the more advanced stuff that you would like to have is there's a, there's a WooCommerce add-on to it and those are never free. Those give you those extra features and if you're fine with investing a little $30 here, $20 here, $40 here, $80 here, then you'll get the perfect solution from WooCommerce but you've invested some money and some time and effort into it. WP Commerce, out of the box, I believe, for beginners, works really well. And for the more complicated stuff, we should be able to manage, but if you really need more power and such, WooCommerce might be better for you. But it does take up the more setup, you spend more time doing basic things. For example, WooCommerce, here you install it, and after you install it, it's going to say, don't forget to install these other four plugins, and it's going to make you do that first before you can get started. So it might give you a bigger, better solution in the end, but maybe in the beginning it's too much to work with. So that's why we're going to use WP Commerce. Can you start with one and then change it to the other? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, they're not quite compatible. Well, okay, I shouldn't say no, no, no. You can transfer between the two with some effort, but again, like the question between <coughs> Joomla versus WordPress. They each think they can do it the right way and therefore they're not quite easily compatible. I've dealt with Business Catalyst, Adobe Business Catalyst. I really like it. That's another great e-commerce solution. But that, when, when my company used it, it was $2,000 for a company to use. And we made uh, a site or two with it and the company did really well with it, but they had to invest $2,000 to get that to work. And to get their database out of their old, their products from their old e-commerce site into Business Catalyst took a few weeks because we had to transfer this data that wasn't quite compatible from one service to another. So while both WooCommerce and WP Commerce work on top of WordPress, each one manages your products and your database and all of that separately, so the transfer between the two is going to be complicated. Question? Um, are paper plugins more like it really depends on the plugin or even the theme. Uh, some you can buy the one-time license and then it, you work with it for as long as you want. You might even get updates and so forth. Sometimes a particular plugin might be this version you can use forever, but then you have to pay for the next version. Or you could also, um, you know, be simply paying for tech support. Maybe the plugin is completely free, but how do you use it? It's complicated. Well, they'll sell you tech support. So you always want to check perhaps more details, and they'll tell you in there what's the extent of the payment. So, like for instance, you were saying all those additional add-ons for WooCommerce, thirty day, forty years, this and that. Um, after you bought all those, um, implementing the site. You start building a second site, you have to buy them all over again from the second site, or do you still have user? Usually you do have to buy them again for the second site because you're buying a license, and the license is for one particular entity. So check the license because sometimes you get plugins that says, you know, one developer can apply to as many sites as they want, or up to five sites. Most of the time what I run into is that you buy the license per site. That's how they make their money. And so there is a whole lucrative business of people selling premium WordPress themes, premium WordPress plugins or support, and um, there's a whole economy about that. So that's the other alternative. We won't really look into it, but that's a possibility, and my companies use it, and it works well. But perhaps for beginners, too much. Question? I was going to say, I went into the more details, the first thing it did was 
the themes were up to like 400 bucks each just for the mail. And then it, um, yeah. the extensions are, and it is single site prices. Yeah, this is the, this is the thing. Everyone, uh, you know, I run into this a lot with clients. They don't they don't understand the value of all of this, the literal value, monetary value. You know, someone can understand the value of this phone. Yeah, it costs six hundred dollars. Obviously, it's full of chips and RAM and a touch screen and an amazing camera and all of that. Sure, it's worth six hundred dollars. A website is worth six hundred dollars. Of course, the website is worth six thousand dollars because it has so many features, so many options, needs to be set up, needs to be updated, needs to be optimized, all of that stuff. So yeah, you are gonna come in and run into plugins that we're so used to, unfortunately, a 99 cent app. That when suddenly a dollar 99 cent app, that's too rich for us. A forty dollar plugin, that's why isn't it free? I see so many things free online. But unfortunately, that's the thing. This stuff has value, a monetary value. So I'm going to be showing you the, the, the most free versions that I can. And some things are recommended to purchase once we get to them, but you'll be able to manage. These clients that I was showing you, Texcoco, the bigger, the bigger client, we're, we're using the completely free WP Commerce plugin. It works perfectly. For Elsa, Elsa's site, it's the free version as well. For swap dots, that one does have a few extra add-ons that we had to buy because that was a special client. You 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 don't want to buy a button without a wristband. We had to link them together, so that was an extra little add-on to the plugin. That was like a thirty-dollar add-on to the plugin, and then now her site works exactly how she envisioned. Does WP Commerce have add-ons too? Though? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. One of the big ones is when we get to this eventually. We're going to be able to accept any major credit or debit card, and we're going to accept it through PayPal. Now, you may not want to use PayPal. Maybe you want to use your own uh, merchant account or payment gateway or whatever. That's fine. WP Commerce out of the box uses word, uses PayPal. If you'd like to use Authorize.net or Stripe or something else, they sell the the Gold Cart add-on, which gives you all of these extra payment gateways. You say, okay, I don't want to invest in that, I'll use PayPal. It has work. It works. For all of our clients, we use PayPal. Um, they've been around, you know, just about 20 years also. They've got hardened security. They're open 24 hours. You can call them. They'll call you. They want your business to succeed because they succeed. So let's come back to, if you were looking at WP Commerce, let's come back to WP eCommerce and click Install Now. I'm going to let that connect, download, unpack, install, and just like any plugin in WordPress, we need to then remember to activate it. You can have plugins installed but not active, just hanging around, using up your space. You want to remember to activate the plugin. Once that's active, I get a little pop-up that says new feature. We're going to look at some of these items in just a moment. What I want to do is pause for one more break. I'll turn the printer back on if you didn't get a printout. We'll take one more break. We'll make sure we're all on the same page. When we come back from the break, then we'll start to look at uh, the rest of the items here. Number six.